Thank you, Rachel. Meeting is called to order. I want to welcome everybody to tonight's meeting. Um, Aileen, could you please promote Ms. Fogarty, please? Ms. Fogarty, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm welcoming you to this hearing, the relicensing hearing. I do want to read the process before we get started. Ms. Perkins, CFA attorney, will introduce into evidence all the materials. Ms. Perkins will invite you to make a brief statement, keeping in mind we have reviewed all the submitted materials. Ms. Perkins will ask the first round of questions. The judging program committee chair will ask the second round of questions. The board members will be invited to ask questions. After the questions are done by the board members, Ms. Perkins will ask any additional questions. Ms. Perkins will invite you to make a brief closing statement if you wish. And Ms. Perkins will close the hearing at the end. The deliberations will be in the executive session number two at the end of the evening. Ms. Perkins, will you just clarify what is required for the voting process? Yes, um, in order to change status of a judge, then two thirds uh, vote is required in those deliberations at the end of the session. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Ms. Perkins, I'm now gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Ms. Fogarty. Um, do you recall receiving a letter dated February 6, 2023 from Ms. Anger outlining a list of ballot comments and concerns made by board members about your um, actions as a CFA judge. Do you recall that? Uh, yes, what was that date? February 6th of this year. Yes, I have it here. Okay. And on that letter, there was a list of comments that the board members made when they filled out the ballot regarding whether or not to relicense you. And many of those concerns were addressed in your specific letters. But I still want to just ask you on the record here today. And um, at this time, I just I'll, I'll note for the record that all the materials that you've been provided or that the board has considered are part of what this hearing is about or in evidence, so to speak, um, which means that we also have the any letters that you wrote in where you already explained actions that you're going to take and that kind of thing. So those are already in evidence. But the over I wanted to hear from you personally and ask this question. Uh, some of the concerns regarding you all revolve around paperwork errors. And here were the comments by the board. Concern about paperwork errors, need to improve paperwork, mechanics and paperwork issues, judge has paperwork issues, information came too late regarding the issues, please get serious about improving paperwork ASAP. And finally, the strongest comment was there's no excuse for a longtime judge to be making these serious paperwork and mechanical errors, even after being counseled. This is a huge embarrassment to CFA and the judging program, but she doesn't seem to care. Must see dramatic improvement in paperwork and attitude prior to the hearing, no excuses. So how do you respond to all of these comments which really revolve around one central question and that is um, the quality of your paperwork? Okay. Um... When we started back judging after COVID, I think it took all of us a little while to get back into gear. Um, and I didn't realize that my paperwork was lacking um, because I really hadn't had any issues um, as far as you know 
paperwork being returned and all. Um, the issue that sparked um, the complaint, I was having a, a very lousy day. I was not feeling well. Uh, there were many circumstances contributing to that. Um, and that show, I think, was one of my worst as far as paperwork. And it just got to a point where like, I, I just can't fix this. I was just, um, I had a clerk I couldn't deal very well with. And because I wasn't feeling well, uh, that's just the way it went. Uh, when I got the notice about the complaint, I figured, yeah, I know I had a bad day. I know that paperwork was horrible. And I figured that was it. And the next show, um, I was very anxious about this letter and having everybody watch me. And I made an error at that show. And when it was brought to my attention by Vicki, I was shocked because normally I don't make mistakes like that. But I hadn't had any sleep. Um, there was jet lag. Um, I did a top 15 super specialty, which I had never done before. And I'm not trying to make excuses, but I, I was really shocked when I saw that mistake. Um, I have been working very closely with Vicki Nye. We've had several conference calls. Um, my paperwork is very neat now. Um, I'm watching what I write and how I write it. And she feels that I've come a long way and my work is acceptable at this time. And I hope to keep monitoring myself so that this never happens again. And so what do you think is going to help you not make these errors in the future? Well, I'm, I'm aware of it now. I wasn't in the beginning, um, you know, and I did chalk it up to being sick that day. But now that I see uh, exactly what was going on and realize it, uh, you know, this, this is, you know, since it's been brought to my attention, I'm much more aware and uh, that I need to make my writing so everybody can read it, not just me. And just closely watch what I do. And, you know, before I write something, double check. How many shows have you judged since you uh, received these complaints or comments? Um, four or five. And in those four or five shows, how was your paperwork? Well, it got better every time. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you can do to continue to make it get better or stay better? Well, yes, watch it closely and realize that um, other people have to look at my work. You know, I know it goes to Shirley and I need to make it legible so she can read it. I don't want to um, make mistakes for the exhibitors and have any kind of errors there. Um, I don't want to be put in this position again and, or have anybody else be put in a bad position. So based on these concerns that you heard in the comments by the board, what is your requested outcome when the board goes into deliberations today? What do you think is fair that the board should do? Well, um, if you read Vicki's letter, I think she is in favor of, you know, my being relicensed. And I think that would be fair. Um, as I said, I will continue to monitor myself and hopefully never have this happen again. Okay, I don't have any further questions. I would turn it over to the board. Melanie, please go first with any questions. Thank you. Hi, Carol. First of all, I'd like to thank you for coming here today and, and for the cooperation 
that you've given us um, since the February board meeting and the notice that you received on the 6th of February. Um, the judging program has no desire to be punitive. Uh, we simply want to ensure that our judges take the accuracy of their paperwork seriously um, so that every cat we judge has a chance of being scored correctly. And we all understand that there are paperwork errors and there are mechanical errors and we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have bad days. Um, our biggest concern was what happened initially um, where you know we had continued errors after we had notified you. I have to say um, that the progress that you've made and your paperwork since then is exemplary. I spoke to central office, they seem to be happy with it. So my question is pretty simple. Um, and I think Shelly kind of touched on it, but I wanna just kind of go right to the, to the bullseye on it. Are you comfortable moving forward that you have what you need from us to ensure that you can correctly make the numerous transfers and, and types of changes that we need to to do and what we encounter overseas and handle the paperwork without mechanical errors overseas, given the fact that often um, at some of those shows, the clerks and master clerks may not act as a reliable safety net. Yeah, you're correct about that. Um, I did review um, Mark, How to Mark a Judge's book, which I had not seen that in I don't know how long. And I think that was really something worth, you know, everybody looking at. Um, because I use, usually just put a slash when it's absent, um, but you should also put an A. And um, just some of the things I read there really helped me. And um, uh, I appreciate, you know, you said that I've improved and I wanna continue to improve. You know, this is not just, um, this is a serious matter and I take it seriously and I, you know, I want to watch my paperwork. I don't want to have somebody coming back and say, hey, look what you did. Yeah. No, I think that, you know, you, you certainly have judged in some very challenging situations. And the fact that, you know, you're pulling paperwork through as clean as you have in the last three shows is is certainly a sign that you're taking this seriously. And, and I, for one, appreciate it. Thank you. That's all I have, Rich. Andy? Yeah, just uh, pretty much echoing what uh, Melanie had just said. She had a very challenging situation in Kuwait with two brand new ring clerks and she did fantastic um and uh you know the show went very very smoothly and they were very very happy to have her and I think I haven't heard anything to the negative and in the past those Kuwait shows have been very very challenging as you say going overseas with new ring clerks but yeah Carol's really really worked hard I've seen her at a few shows and she's really working hard to improve. Penny, thank you. Do you have any questions for Carol? No. Thank you. Any, I'm gonna turn it over to the board. Any additional questions from the board? Shelly? I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Fogarty, do you have any um, closing statements you would like to make? Yeah, just a, a brief one, if I could. Um, I would like to apologize for my mistakes and I appreciate the opportunity to work this out with Vicki and to speak with all of you today. And I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. Forwardy, for attending the hearing. Uh, Shelley, can we close this portion of the hearing? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> we will uh, move on to the agenda. And I believe our next order of business is approve the orders of the day. Does anyone have any changes and or additions? John? Yeah, I would like to talk about the cancellation of the Middle Ohio Cat Fancy Show. I would like to discuss that at the end of the closed session. 
at the end of closed session. Okay, well, Rachel. Part of closed sessions. As long okay. as they're taken care of before the night is over, I really appreciate it. Okay, Rachel, where do we have that? Under new business. Okay. Item number 14, can't show power failure. So John, are you asking it to be moved now into closed session? Yeah, I think there's some stuff we need to talk to in, in closed session. Okay, so we'll move it into closed session. Thank you, sir. Um, let's see, Kathy Calhoun. Uh, yes, <clears throat> excuse me. I would like to add a discussion about World Cat Congress and if there's any um, recommendations or anything that the board would like us, uh, Rachel and I, to have added to the agenda. Open or, open or closed session? Closed session. Okay. Rachel, you're keeping track of this, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Kathy, anything else? No. Okay. Pam Delabar? I, <clears throat> I just wanted to have a very quick statement right now to ask uh, my fellow regional directors, in fact, the directors at large, too, uh, to help drum up donations for the animal welfare uh, breed assistance program. They've had an awful lot of breed rescues lately with tremendous veterinary costs. Um, I told Rich earlier today, the veterinary costs are looking up almost to the six figures. So please, please, this is one way that we can actually show the world that we do care about the first object of our constitution, which is the welfare of all cats. So please uh, drum up some uh, donations that, to go to uh, the BAP because it's badly, badly needed. And that's it, Rich. Thank you, Pam. <clears throat> uh, any other changes or additions to the order of the day? Okay, Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong. We are moving the cat show power failure uh, that was in Mansfield, Ohio, now into closed session. And Kathy Calhoun requested uh, a brief discussion on World Cat Congress, also in closed session. That's correct. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to approve the orders of the day as adjusted? George votes. Thanks, Delibar. George. May I have a second? Delabar seconds. Thank you, Pam. Are there any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we will go on to ratification of online motions. Okay. Um, let's see. Rachel, you and I um, have this. So what I before I turn it over to you, I just want to remind the board, and Shelly will um, chime in on this if needed. We have a motion currently pending that is not concluded from this weekend. And when the time comes to address that, I will open it for debate and we will um, come to the conclusion on the online motion that is still pending. All right, uh, Rachel, let's go ahead and do what you have in print. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to uh, number two, which is a motion that failed. Um, and this was a motion that was presented by uh, Sharon Roy, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, because it failed by two votes, if the uh, author of that motion would like to bring it back up and have the whole board vote on it, uh, this would be the time that we would do that. Um, hold on, I've lost it. It was uh, regarding the um, yep. April 22nd, 23rd show to be held in Oaks, Pennsylvania, grant an exception to show rule 4.06 and allow the central Pennsylvania cat fanciers, ragamuffin cat fanciers, and Turkish Angora fanciers international to include one uh, open champion ring each day. Yes, I would like to bring it up. I think it would be very helpful for them with the, especially with the Tika show, like 20 minutes away. I'll second that motion. 
Okay. Uh, does anyone have any comments or additional discussion? <clears throat> Kenny? Yeah, I just want to reiterate, this is a very popular format for our exhibitors. And I don't think we should just keep it uh, you know, restricted in certain regional areas. And this is a new club with serious competition nearby. I think we should support this. Okay, thank you, Kenny. Pam Mosier? Um, yes, before, um, because of all the region, reasons we have presented before, and the reason why I'm opposed is that we have never gotten any feedback on how um, these, these shows that have had this, because this is supposed to be an experimental format, how, um, how, what's happened. I mean, there's been nothing said. And I, I just don't, you know, and for the other reason that this was basically supposed to be used for the international show, and we're letting all these clubs do this. So I've got to be opposed to it. Okay, thank you, Pam. Any additional comments? Okay, seeing no additional comments, if you're in favor of this motion, please raise your hand. Um, as you're raising your hand, the reminder is please do not take your hand down until I advise you to take your hand down. Okay. Kathy Dunham, Mark Hannon, Rachel Anger, Kenny Curley, Pam Delabar, Melanie Morgan. Yukika Hayata, Carol Krasnowski, Mike Shelton, George Eigenhauser, Sharon Roy, Paula Noble, Kathy Calhoun, Annette Wilson. Please lower your hand. If you are opposed, raise your hand. Pam Mosier and John Clilla, please lower your hand. If you are an abstention, raise your hand. Russell Webb. Rachel, please announce the vote. That's 14 yes votes, two no votes, one abstention. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Next one, Rachel. The next one I'd like to bring up is uh, number six. It failed with three no votes, grant an exception to show rule 4.06 and allow the North Atlantic Regional Show to have one OCP ring each day at their show, August 5th and 6th, 2023. Uh, I believe it was uh, Sharon's motion again. Uh, hold on, I gotta get, okay. Yes, it was. And the difference with this one is that the North Atlantic region was planning on hiring two separate judges just to do OCP. They're not gonna be part of the regular um, judging committee. Okay, thank you, Sharon. If that's Any, your motion, I'll second it. Okay. Aline, you have yes. your hand up. Thank you, Rachel. I seconded it. Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to make mention that we're still, we're going into the new show season with an experimental format. When does it not become experimental? Every single one of these shows that's done with the OCP rings has to be scored manually. It takes almost the same amount of time to score an OCP ring as it does the show itself. So I just, you know, it's something that we want to program for. If we're going to continue with these, it's something we need to program for um, instead of continuing to keep them experimental. So I just uh, want to mention that. Aline, do we need to address the question tonight? No. I brought it up the last meeting and they just, but nothing ever seems to happen with it. So I just wanted to mention again, to bring it to your attention. Okay, thank you. It doesn't need to be addressed tonight. Okay, Annette. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention, I, I voted for the one in Oaks in April because it's before the start of the new show season, but starting with the new show season, when there are, I think it's 50 or 60 premieres and 85 cats and championship, entered, we're already going to be selecting additional champions and premieres. So I, that's why I'm having a problem supporting this after May 1st. We already have something in place that is going to be requiring us to hang ribbons on additional champions and premieres. That's all. Okay, thank you, Annette. Any additional comments? Okay, I'm going to call for the vote on this. If you're I, in favor, oh, Pam Delabar, did you have a comment? Yes, I did, Rich. Um, going back, 
we allowed this at first for regional shows, basically in conjunction with our regional uh, awards banquets. And we're coming up on, on the time where we're, we're putting together our regional awards banquets and, and uh, the shows that accompany them. Um, I believe in other experimental formats, we went over a year it, before we were able to evaluate, um, you know, the total effectiveness of the program. Um, I have no problem with, with Sharon's regional award show um, to actually have the, the uh, format that we've been discussing for regional award shows. Okay, Annette? Okay, I, maybe I'm confused. I thought this was a regional show. I didn't know it was a regional award show. Can Sharon clarify that? Sharon Roy? Yes, it's the regional award show. Okay, well that changes my mind, thank you. Uh, okay. Any additional questions or comments? Okay, if you're in favor, please raise your hand. Kathy Calhoun, Mark Hannon, Carol Krasnowski, Penny Curley, George Eigenhauser, Kathy Dunham, Pam Dalabar, Yukika Hayata, Mike Shelton, Annette Wilson, Sharon Roy, Rachel Anger, Paula Noble, John Kalua, Russell Webb, Melanie Morgan. Please lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Pam Mosier, lower your hand. And if you are an abstention, raise your hand. Seeing no abstentions, Rachel, please call the vote. Sorry, that's 16 yes, one no, zero abstentions. Okay, motion passes. Okay, Rachel, continue. Uh, motion number eight failed. I believe that was uh, resolved elsewhere. Uh, motions 15 and 21 failed, and those events have taken place. So uh, the those motions are concluded. Okay, so then the only um, online motion we have left to deal with is the one that is still pending. And I don't then, know where we are on the um, count of the vote, but I do want to give the maker of the motion and whoever seconded it to bring forth any additional comments or if they would like to amend this motion. And then I will ask the rest of the board for their additional comments. Rachel? Yeah, I actually have that under old business, um, unless you wanna move it forward and, and take care of that agenda item now. Shelley, should we be doing this now since we're ratifying online motions? Are we talking about the one that is currently still open? Yes. Well, it's an online motion, so it should be in this uh, area. It's still an open motion on the floor. Okay. Um, I am the maker of that motion. So uh, I would like, I need to go to it. <laughs> I would like to amend that motion. Uh, it's on page 51. Sorry, I had a cat issue. <laughs> Sorry. Um, can't get that. Okay, uh, the motion will be amended to say that the Kalmany Cat Club be given permission to replace an injured judge with Aina Nuke as approved by Vicki Nye for its upcoming show in Orange, France, 15, 16, April, 2023 as follows. Uh, and you see the, uh, the lineup that they have there. Um, the only uh, um, amendment I would like to make is that uh, because the club has issued a new flyer with uh, Aina Nuke, if I'm pronouncing that right, not doing super specialty, that would be the change to Pam's written motion there. So uh, she would be doing, um, as is reflected on the flyer, uh, all breed, no super specialty. Okay, and just um, clarification purposes for all those in the audience, Rachel, Dana is a guest judge, correct? 
She is a guest judge. Okay, thank uh, you. Uh, who is not in our um, approved guest judge program at this time. Okay, all right. Any additional, Pam Delavar? Oh, have you, you haven't called for a discussion. No, I'm, I'm asking if you have any comments. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yes, this has been my dream. Um, the original show license showed uh, Daniel Kness, uh as super specialty in championship, Marilee Griswold, super specialty in championship in kittens. Um, that there was no change on Marilee. Daniel, unfortunately, is the judge who broke his hand. Uh, Lorraine um, Lavard was originally scheduled um, uh, on the original flyer and on the show license, which I have provided uh, the board, the show license and the uh, original uh, flyer. Lorraine was, was scheduled to do super specialty in kittens and championship. Um, her, the revise shows her doing uh, just super specialty in kittens. The original show license had a TBA and that was filled by Iris Zink. Uh, and that the, um, where did you go? The championship uh, super specialty was given to Iris and taken away from Lorraine. Um, Michael Schleichner, uh, there was no change in his assignment doing super specialty in championship and the same thing with Inga Ball doing super specialty in uh, championship. And um, Ina Nuke was uh, added to replace Daniel Kness, um and she is uh, Aubrey only. This show is in uh, two weeks. Hey, thank you, Pam. Are there any other additional comments or questions? Okay, um, Shelly, is this considered uh, a motion that requires 50% plus, or is this a two thirds motion now? It's a, not a motion that has been pre noticed, and it is a motion that the board has known is coming and is pre noticed. And so I would say it's a 51% because it's a motion that's been on the floor for quite some time. And because the motion was never concluded, uh, the board was able to amend it. Correct. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Rachel, you had your hand up? I was going to clarify that as well. So, oh, thank you. thank you. Very good, thank you. Okay, um, seeing no additional questions or comments, I'm gonna call for the vote. If you are in favor of this motion, please raise your hand. Rachel Anger, Kenny Curley, Kathy Dunham, Pam Delabar, Russell Webb, Carol Krasnowski, George Eigenhauser, Yukiko Hayata, Mike Shelton, Kathy Calhoun, Paula Noble, Sharon Roy, Mark Hannon, Annette Wilson, John Kalilla, Pam Mosier, Melanie Morgan. Please lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. Rachel, no one opposed, no one abstained. That's correct, 17 yes, zero no, zero abstentions. Okay, thank you, motion passes. Next time I'll call for objections. <laughs> All right, um, Rachel, uh, let's go ahead and um, we'll, we'll take your uh, motion on ratifying all online motions. Are you ready for that? I'm ready for that. I need a second. Thank you. Carol seconds. Thank you, Carol. Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously to ratify all online motions. Thank you. Okay. We will move on to Thank you, Rachel. 
Um, we will move on to Melanie Morgan with the judging program. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> Unless someone has a specific item or area they'd like to discuss and or any questions about any of these areas, I'll jump directly to the action items in the report. Does anyone have any questions? I see no questions, Melanie. All right, I have only one action item. It's a housekeeping issue regarding cleaning up judging program rule 4.7. Um, associate program trainees were erroneously included here, uh, meaning that it severely impacts their ability to work on their qualifications. So our motion is to remove the words associate judge trainee from judging program rule 4.7. George seconds. Thank you, Thank George. You. Uh, open for discussion. Seeing no discussion, any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Melanie. Anything additional? That's all I have for open session. Thank you. Melanie, that is a record. It is. <laughs> it is an all time record. Okay, we, we will move on to central office, Colleen. Okay, I'll make mine quick. The first was just information only about discussions we've had with credentials about the changes at the annual meeting. So unless anybody has any questions on that, I'll move on to the next topic. Um, it is regarding the show licensing deadline for the ID. It wasn't really clear if the... Um, exception for the 30-day licensing was extended for the ID as well. So I'm, I'm bringing this forward just so that we're all on the same page and it's clear uh, as far as what that extension might be. So I provided a board action item. Um, Ed Raymond had provided this wording for the board to consider. And Carol moves that we uh, ratify this motion. Okay, I heard Carol made the motion and I heard Kenny in a very soft voice second it. me. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, I have my hand up. Kathy, go ahead. Just wanted to uh, add that the ID committee supports this action item. Thank you. Okay, um, any additional questions or comments? Any objections to the motion? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Eileen, do you have anything else? Uh, the only other thing I had in the report was just a copy of the new um, show sponsorship request that now has the Region 9 Judge Airfare Supplement in it, and the Infrequent Region Judge Supplement is the name we came up with for that. Um, I sent it to all the regional directors. It's up online. It goes out with every show license. And I see Pam has her hand up. Pam Mosier? I just wouldn't, is it out, is it online now? Yes, you... it, is, it is online, yes. Okay, great, thanks. Kathy Calhoun? Yeah, uh, Alan and I discussed this briefly via email, but the, the question that I keep getting is how would clubs know who, which judges would be able to um, uh, be considered for infrequent regional judging? And uh, so, so we somehow have to be able to provide that information uh, so that it's readily accessible. Um, Kathy, you're just making a statement, not asking a direct question to Aline. Is it a must do for central office? Yeah, unless she thought of something before, since we last traded emails. Um, Kathy, I provided you with a, a sample chart of what I thought might work. Um, and just so everybody knows, it's a it would be a chart uh, listing all the judges and if they have judged within any within a region in the past three show seasons. So it wouldn't list which show it was, it wouldn't list how many times they've judged, it would just simply indicate that they have or have not uh, judged within a region in that 
time frame. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Eileen, thank you for getting that uh, report updated too before the beginning of the new show season. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything additional? Nope, I have nothing else. Okay. Uh, next item is the IT committee report. And um, that's Tim and James. And I do want to thank you guys for including an update on the genetics and where things are going there. I see you have no action items. Do either of you have anything additional to add? And if you don't, does any board member have any questions for James? And if Tim is out in the audience. George has a question. George? What are we going to do to assure that the clickers are collected at the end of the show? James? Um, we're going to have position uh, baskets and tables at the exit of the uh, banquet hall there and collect them from people as they leave. We'll have signs. We will be able to inventory those directly after the meeting, and we will know exactly who didn't turn in their clicker, and we can hunt them down. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions for James? Kathy Cahoon? What is the cost of the clicker? Oh, what was the total? No, what? what is the cost of each clicker? Of each clicker. Oh, each clicker. You know, I have not inquired on a replacement cost on those. Um, I will do that. So, I, so my so my assumption is that you would you would somehow locate who which club has not turned in their clicker and bill as such, or what what are you gonna do? How are you gonna chase them down? What does yeah. that mean? Yeah, we will know which that delegate that. did not turn in their clicker. Well, no, we'll know what club and what delegate didn't turn in the clicker. Of course, we'll try to tr um, track them down there. If we just cannot recover it, um, yes, I would say we would um, charge them the appropriate amount to replace the clicker. Yeah, we we, we, ahead, we think Ellie. it should be in the area of $100 to replace a clicker. It's not just the cost of the clicker. It's the fact that we have to do it. It's the ordering. It's it's the entire process. So we'll, we'll make every effort to track down those clickers. They will all be labeled. They'll have the club name on them. They'll have numbers. So if for some reason they're left in the bathroom or wherever, they'll be able to be turned in. They have our name on it. We also will be having, uh, there'll be wrist lanyards attached at the bottom here. So we've developed a, a pretty robust system to keep track of these. I fully expect one or two to go missing, but hopefully we'll recover them. And we'll, we'll get them. We'll get them. Okay, very good. Anything additional, James? Um, no. And does anybody have any additional questions for James? Okay, once again, thank you to James and, and Tim. Next item on the agenda is yearbook and publications, Mark Hannon. There's no action items, we can move on. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Mark before we move on? John Kalula? Sorry, I put that, I'm going to push the button by mistake. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark, thank you. Um, Aline, can you promote Ed Raymond, please? Oh, yes, of course. And, uh, Rich, in the meantime, this is Carol. I would like to make a standing motion to accept all the changes as presented. Including the uh, pre-notice um, addendum? Yes. Okay, thank you. Does Rachel, anybody wish to make a Kenny, we'll standing, standing second? second? Okay, thank you, Kenny. I have Carol standing motion, Kenny standing second on all. Um, is Ed Raymond with us yet? I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Ed. Thank Perfect. you for joining us. Sure. Take us through. Okay. First um, action item is to institute a late fee to enforce the timely submission of the show flyer to central office. Um, the board voted in October to um, institute this fee, but the follow-up action to incorporate it into the show rules was never taken. This is that effort. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments? 
Okay, any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Number two. Number two is an effort to clean up references to uh, the additional championship, champion and premier awards and all breed and specialty rings when top 15 is reached. Um, as I was reading what Aileen incorporated into the draft of the 2023-2024 show rules, she incorporated what the delegation passed, but it didn't make sense. So this is a cleaned up version of that. Okay. Any questions or comments? Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Number three. Number three is um, an amendment to a show rule to specify that a violation of the exhibitor's code of conduct may constitute unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay. Any comments or questions? Any objections? Seeing no objections, motion passes unanimously. Number four. Number four, um, this is a request from the International Division um, to add a show rule that requires that when a show offers one or more specialty rings, an equal number of long hair and short hair specialty rings be, must be offered. Okay, um, Carol or Kathy Calhoun and Matthew Wong, do either one of you want to uh, share any additional comments? Kathy? I can. Uh, we've had some instances where there has been a huge disproportion in the number of short hair rings versus long hair rings in the in the last couple of um, weeks. Um, that, gi that gives a disproportionately advantage to um, whoever, whatever short specialty has the most amount of rings. Uh, in the past, it was a matter of if there weren't enough short hair or long hair judges available uh, to balance it, that is no longer the case. Uh, it has been the common practice in regions uh, one through seven, eight, and most of the time nine to balance the number of, of long hair and short hairs when we have specialties. It's the fairest opportunity for all that are involved. And I think now that it is being um, somewhat uh, used to, to one or the other's advantage, we need to have a rule that establishes what we expect to happen. And that would be a balance between long hairs and short hair rings. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Melanie? Do um, you wanna let John speak first since he's part of the International Committee? Sure, John. The, prop, the reason that we propose this, this uh, show rule is because there are shows like three long hair, six short hair in, 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 uh, in China, so in certain area. That put a disadvantage to the long hair people because they missing out on four rings. And this is not just one or two instances, it's getting to be a constant thing. And it's really not fair. They all, everybody need to have equal opportunity. Thank you, John. Melanie? Thank you. Um, I 100% support this. However, I have one question. What happens when you have a show that is licensed? And this question is probably more for Ed. Um, so the show is licensed with equal long hair and short hair, but something happens to the short hair judge or the long hair judge. And for some reason they don't make it to the show. Is that covered with the way that we have this phrased or do we need to address that? Well. This um, amendment is in the section of the show rules dealing with licensing the show. Okay. So I, I don't think it would deal with post-licensing judges, you know, becoming unavailable. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call on Kathy first because she had her hand up before Carol and Mike. Kathy. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't think that that would be um, an issue. It would be handled as if in any other case where we had a judge that was ill or a judge that uh, was not available. We would look, though, if that just judge was replaced, they would be replaced with what the judge who is absent is licensed to do. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Carol? Yes, I just wanted to comment that 
a situation uh, where the judge couldn't make it there for whatever reason um, would be more or less an emergency situation. And I think it could be handled uh, by the either the executive committee or just uh, allowed to proceed based on the emergency situation involved. Thank you, Carol. Mike? I just wanted to ask if there are any shows that are already licensed for the 2023-24 show season that would be in violation of this rule? Um, and would they get some kind of an exemption for it? Uh, Kathy, John, and Matthew, do either one of you know? John? No, there isn't. And I'm going to make sure that that's not going to happen anymore, starting next show season. OK, John, thank you. Okay, any additional questions or comments? Any objections to this show rule? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Number five. Number five, a variation of this request was brought up as part of the International Division um, report at the February board meeting. Um, it's been brought back and, and run through show rules. Essentially, it's to remove Vietnam from the Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam area of residence and create a new area of residence for Vietnam. And also to add Vietnam as a separate country for uh, season ending awards. Um, so the amendments are to 6.22 and to Article 20 or 36. Kathy Cahoon. Yeah, um, we we realized that initially this these divisional uh, wins or divisional segments were set up based on quarantine. Uh, but in reality, there are obstacles over and above quarantine laws, and we pro we haven't checked quarantine laws for quite some time. Where where in some countries in some areas, it's just not uh, reasonable to expect people to be able to fly here and there to attend a show. Vietnam is one of our emerging markets. They're very, very excited. And we would certainly like to give them the incentive to continue to put on shows and attend shows. So in um, by doing this, they would have an attainable goal. Um, the uh, International Committee is, is taking a look at this um, and we'll come back sometime in the uh, next uh, season to make some recommendations on how we can make sure that uh, globally, we are we are in position where people have the proper incentives, opportunities, and um, yeah, opportunities to show their cats to be and to be rewarded. So I am the international division, of course, is fully behind separating Vietnam at this time. Okay. Any additional comments or questions? Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Number six. Number six is a request from the um, ID committee to change the closing date for shows in China from Wednesday at p.m. My understanding is it's pretty routine for requests to come to the um, executive committee for such an extension. Ed, Ed you cut out on uh, my connection. I don't know if you cut out with everybody. Did you say changing the time from Wednesday to Thursday? That is correct. Okay. Um, Kathy Cahoon? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, comment that um, currently China has a seven day lead time. Uh, they will be going to 14 days, but um, there it's a different climate and a different world. We have other, we have obstacles that prevent people from being able to license early. So, um, it really doesn't do, um, there's no disservice to us as an organization to change it from Wednesday to Thursday. Uh, the, the clubs come to us quite often, like on a Tuesday, and they'll request a Thursday uh, closing date. It's already 24 hours, almost 24 hours ahead. Um, they're in a different day. It presents a lot of work for our secretary, the executive committee, uh, I, I don't know any instance where we have not approved it. I think we need to take a step back and say, hey, this is this is how we do business in China. This works for the clubs. 
If they can get the catalogs printed and get everything organized by closing on Thursday, I don't think we should stand in the way. Kathy, I have a question. Yep. Moving it from Wednesday to Thursday, does this um, possibly lead to the executive committee receiving requests to close Friday morning at noon? Or is this going to be, is this going to be it? They have to close by Thursday at 9 p.m. their time. It would be, it would be the intent of the international committee to strongly communicate to um, our folks in China that Thursday is it. Now, would I say that that someone may not come and say Friday at noon? It's that's very hard to say. But I would I would be in a, my position on that would be no. Okay. Okay. John Kloa. I just want to comment on that. So far, all the requests are like Thursday, up to Thursday, and I haven't seen one coming through or asking to extend to Friday so far. So I think Thursday is pretty safe. Okay, thank you. Any additional comments or questions? Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Number seven. Number seven is a request brought forward by Melanie and the judging committee to allow associate judges and single specialty judges to exhibit on the second day of a show where they officiate or at the second show held on the same weekend at the same location. Okay, Pam Delabar. Um, I, I like the intent of this, but in the past, one of the, the problems that we have had with judges showing uh, you know, the day that they're not officiating is the fact that we have people who will complain and have complained in the past the club paid for that judge to get there. They didn't pay for the other exhibitors to get there. And that the judge has an unfair advantage in that case to be able to um, uh, show their catch. So I just wanted to bring that to people's attention. We have had to deal with complaints in the past uh, on this very same thing anytime this, this was brought up. Um, otherwise, I think it's great for for our people to be able to get as much uh, uh, much training, handling, and experience uh, in in preparation for going into a, another specialty or into from associate judge into uh, the uh, CFA program. So, Pam, before you uh, uh, are done talking, question for you: uh, When I when I call for objections, are you going to object on this? I was just doing this as a point of information. Okay, very good, thank you. Melanie? Thank you. Um, Pam's correct, we've had those concerns in the past. Um, this is slightly different in that it's only for single specialty judges and or associate judges, and it's part of our continuing effort to try to make uh, the process of applying to um, the judging program more user-friendly and less cost prohibitive. Um, we want to encourage all of our single specialty people at all levels. And I would say that um, when clubs hire single specialty judges or, and, um, and even associate judges, that they're often going out of their way um, to, to incur added expenses um, to bring in those people to help encourage them and help them along the way. So this is a slightly different situation in that these people are really just beginning their journey um, and we want to encourage them in every way that we can. Okay, Kenny? Yeah, uh, I just see a ton of problems with this. Um, so you're having a judge who's gonna be judging the next day, a Sunday, who will be exhibiting it the day before. He won't have any, will he have access to a catalog? Um, I mean, there is no way possible it's going to look fair to the exhibitors are going to be on that second day. I, I can't support this. Um, and if I might, the, the way that the rule is written, the judge needs to be judging on the Saturday and can show on Sunday. The reverse does, is not allowed. It sounds like Tika to me. Okay. Okay, Pam Dalabar, I saw you had your hand up. 
I was going to say the same thing that Ed did. Okay, thank you. Any additional comments or questions? Okay, because I know somebody is going to is not going to support this. I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Melanie Morgan, George Eigenhauser, Kathy Dunham, Carol Krasnowski, Russell Webb, Rachel Anger, Mike Shelton, Pam Delabar, Kathy Calhoun, Paula Noble, Mark Hannon. Oh, please don't lower your hand. Um, Rachel, oh boy. I got to start over. <clears throat> Melanie Sorry, Morgan, George. George Eigenhauser, Kathy Dunham, Russell Webb, Rachel Anger, Mike Shelton, Dan Delabar, Kathy Calhoun, Paula Noble, Mark Hannon, John Kalula, Pam Mosier, Sharon Roy, Annette Wilson, Carol Krasnowski, Yokiko Hayata. Okay, please lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Kenny Curley. Lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. Rachel, no abstentions. That's 16 yes, one no, zero abstentions. Motion passes. Number eight. Number eight is um, to extend for the current show season. And there is a typo here. Um, it should be 2022-2023. Um, the exception to the score rules that it, cats in China need not show in their specific area of residence um, to receive a DW in those areas. They only need to show in any area of China. This is an existing rule. Um, we checked with Matthew Wong. I should say Aileen checked with Matthew. Um, he reports that individuals in China have been showing thinking that this exception was still in place. Uh, Matthew, do you want to say anything on this? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> right now, there are a lot of uh, shows in China East and China West, but there's only been a couple of shows in China North. And throughout this season, the participants have been uh, assuming that uh, they can be a China North cat, but show in China East or West all season and could still be eligible for the DW in China North. Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments? Thank you, Matthew. <clears throat> any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Uh, number nine. Number nine um, extends the, ex the exception that you just passed to next show season, 2023-2024. Okay. Any comments or questions? Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Number 10. Number 10 is a request that all proposals for show rule changes be routed through the show rules committee. Um, and that wherever possible, we limit show rule changes to those brought forward at the October board meeting. Um, we can bring things that require adjustments or follow up back in December and or February. Um, doing things in April is frankly pretty late. Um, and it's, Aileen is scrambling to get the show rules completed for next show season. Carol? Yes, I just wanna comment briefly that um, the reason for this, this request is that when show rule changes are embedded in other committee reports, it becomes extremely difficult to track them. And some of them tend to get lost in the shuffle. Not only that, um, some of the changes will affect various show rules that were not anticipated when the change was written. And unless the show rules committee is involved right from the start, it, it's impossible to make sure everything is correct. It becomes hard for the show rules committee, the central office, and especially for our exhibitors to know what's happening. So um, we would hope that everyone would support this request. And I will say once again, I made this comment a couple of times um, since June, all show rules need to go to the show committee. 
please do not present a shell rule in your report without reviewing it with the shell committee, because chances are what you have written is, is not going to be correct, and it may affect other shell rules, as Carol just commented on. Very, very important. All shell rules, even coming from central office, must go to the shell rules committee. Okay. Um, any additional comments or questions regarding this? Any objections? Okay, I know we're going to try hard on this one. This passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, then we have the addendum, Ed. Yes, the addendum is a last minute request. Um, it is to amend the show rules to restrict the super specialty format to licensed CFA judges. Um, this is something that passed the board back in 2018, but was never memorialized in the show rules. Okay, Melanie. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> Ed's right. This was voted on and approved as part of the guest judge guidelines. It wasn't a show rule. Uh, and that was back in December, 2018. In hindsight, it should have been included in the rules as having it merely be a part of the guidelines made it difficult, just as I think Carol, um, has alluded to, to find and enforce, um, and evidenced by the fact that numerous, um, with the numerous changes on show licensing personnel, central offices erroneously, erroneously approved guest judges for super specialty when, you know, per what the board has voted on, that should not be happening. Um, it makes sense to codify this uh, very reasonable ruling in an easily accessible location, and Ed's done that here. Um, I can talk to the reasoning for this when we voted on it back in December 2018. Um, but when I look at it, the same rationale that made it necessary in 2018 is even more pertinent now. Um, even our seasoned CFA Albury judges find that super specialty format complicated and confusing. Um, approved guest judges are almost always judging in the international division, uh, although sometimes and or, and or Europe um, and certainly the international di division doesn't always give a good safety net with the clerk and master clerk oversight. Um, the super specialty format's a complex exercise at best. Um, and it's best left to our CFA Albury judges. So um, that's it for now. I may have a couple other comments based off whatever comes up. Thank you, Melanie. Pam Delabar. I am against this one because the, the uh, rule did not get out after December 2018, uh, we never knew about it in Europe and been going happily ever after with T1 approved, tier one approved guest judges doing super specialty. Our other colleagues, our, our tier one colleagues think super specialty is just common sense. We are not having a problem with our, um, I wanna say we have nine uh, T1 or, or tier one judges within uh, Europe who use this. In fact, uh, some of you on the board have been at the same shows where they have been doing super specialty. They're not the ones that are having a problem with it. Super specialties are very common in region nine Europe. And for us to be able to continue to offer this, the tier one judges have been doing it. Um, I would support this if it would uh, give an exemption to tier one judges may uh, be asked to do super specialty. But as it stands now, no, I cannot support it. It really only hurts one area and that's region nine Europe. Okay, does anybody want to comment on, on Pam's recommendation? Penny? I'm sorry. Yeah, I would agree with Pam. Um, if they've already done it, it, it's, it is a common sense effort. If, if for the first couple of times, it does take a lot of thought and some time. But the tier one judges over there, the guest judges have already done it and have offered this to our exhibitors. I think maybe an, uh, an amendment uh, uh, as far as region nine is concerned may be in order. Okay. Melanie? Um, to my knowledge, only three of the current approved guest judges have done super specialty. 
all three of which um, have since moved over uh, to become approval pending CFA all breed judges. So they're now entitled to do that. Um, and when we do a paperwork review, that paperwork review supports the fact that adding super specialty to the challenge of an unfamiliar system with some of these um, approved guest judges who have not necessarily judged for us um, for quite some time um, is asking for trouble with mechanical issues. So Melanie, before you lower your hand, have how many tier one judges have done super specialty in region nine? I don't, um, uh, what I have here is that I think Satu, Inga and Danielle may have done them. Um, so three, in addition to Olga, Olga and Nadja who are now all breed judges in CFA. Okay. Right. And I would say that super, we're not saying that they can't, so those are the only three that have done it. Um, and, you know, having a guest judge is an option. And so is having a super specialty format. Um, we're not saying that the other judges on that license can't have super specialty. We're not precluding them from having super specialty on their, on their slate. We're simply saying that if they decide that they want to utilize guest judges, they need to have them be either all breed or specialty. Okay, Pam Delabar. Um, I will back up what Melanie said and I put my hand up because I know, <laughs> I know very well that Satu Hamelainen has done super specialty. Uh, Inga Ball has definitely done super specialty as has Daniel Canace. And not only have they done it once, they've done it in the past four years. So these, these people are more well-trained and more, have more experience with super specialty than many of our all breed CFA judges. Uh, Cause many will not even uh, sign a contract. Um, again, the tier ones are really a part of us being able to build a judging cadre within region nine. We've got a fantastic market over here trying to get FIFA exhibitors and WCF exhibitors and many of the independent clubs, which I, I know is a, a very foreign concept to people in the US. Uh, we're trying to get those people to add CFA to their, their, their show going experience, you know, to please add us and join us at some of our shows and this is working um to say now after this has been going on for well over four years and the you know the shows have been licensed uh in those four years with this super specialty going on to say now that they can't do it is really a slap in the face to these people who have taken the time to judge for us. And to tell you the truth, uh, when I'm looking at uh, those judges that judge for WCF and uh, FIFA, they're actually taking a pay cut to come judge for us because they get paid more when they judge in their own associations. I get paid more when I judge their associations. Um, that's why I'm saying tier one, they're special, they're colleagues and um, this is a hit on region nine where we're still needing this to grow. Carol, do you want to amend your motion? Um, I, yes, I, I would like to amend it to read that um, only, oh, wait a minute, where's the part we're adding? Hold on one second. Um, only a licensed CFA judge or a tier one guest judge may judge a super specialty ring. Um, Is that, where was the original motion? Can, can you scroll up, Aline? It's right at the bottom of the page. Oh, that's the now, right? Yeah. 
But that's I, the rationale. What's the actual motion? The, the the change the most the change language was that only a oh, yeah. licensed CFA judge. So I think I was correct in my revised motion. My only question is: Is a tier one guest judge is that the correct phrase, or is it in a? Uh, where did I just see it? So I believe Pam Dalabar. Pam, you got to correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you were only asking for an exception for Region Nine, not all the other areas. Was that correct? No, I think it should be for everybody. Okay, uh, I misunderstood one, you. I thought you said just for Region Nine. Okay. I said it. It specifically hurts Region Nine if that's taken away. Okay. All right. So Carol, before I call on others, uh, in Ed. Uh, do we have it worded correctly for the this show rule? I think that I don't think tier one guest judge is actually a defined term. I believe that should be a guest judge at the approved guest judge level. What do, what do we officially call it? Okay, I'm I'm going to call on Melanie because she may know the answer, okay. Melanie. Or approved guest judges. And um, since this request came from me, I will say I will not support this and I will bring up the original uh, request. Okay, so first I gotta I gotta see if Carol wants to amend the motion. If Carol doesn't want to amend the motion, then we can have somebody else amend, make an amendment. And Kenny has suggested okay. he will. So I want to start there first and then um, Annette, do you have a comment or question? Yeah, I, I don't know why we can't vote on this motion. And if it fails, then present an amended motion. I'm confused. Me too. Uh, Shelly, don't we entertain amendments during the motion? So you can entertain amendments during the motion. You can absolutely do that. Nothing's making you vote on it. But it really goes to the person who made the motion. If they want to change their motion, um, and the second agrees, then they can amend it. And that's why I asked Carol if she wants to amend it. She doesn't have to um, amend it. She could leave it as is. And then I can ask Kenny, because he asked to amend the motion, who I believe, and Rachel, correct me, I'm wrong, Kenny is a standing second on all these. Correct. Okay, Annette, go that's ahead correct. and continue. Yeah, yeah, I'm confused. I thought Melanie asked the show rules committee to bring this motion. So how is it Carol's motion? It's Carol's motion because she made the standing motion. Um, the show rules committee is not a board member. They don't make motions. They just prepared this for us. So we need a board member to make the motion. Carol made a standing motion on all of these. Kenny made a standing second. And so the only person who can amend this is Carol. If she doesn't want to, then we vote when Rich calls it. I'm so then, confused. Yeah. Carol? Yes, I have a question for Shelly. If, if Go ahead. we vote on the motion as it was written and it fails, is it permissible to then present an amended motion? Or do we have to go back to the drawing board with this? Well, it's technically, it's just a motion for reconsideration that you can then amend. And technically, I will have to look that up. That's actually a little bit more technical. Let me look that up if you really want to do that. I think I would prefer to amend the motion now, um, but I would like to get a feel. I, I, for, I would just do it for region nine. So uh, I don't know the correct terminology for the tier one judges, like officially what they're called is, what do we call them officially? But I would like to say only a licensed CFA judge or a judge licensed at, a guest judge licensed at the tier one level. May I suggest some language for you? Go ahead, Ed. And now it's getting common. Um, <laughs> so say, <laughs> I would add the words, or a guest judge at the approved guest judge level. And I believed approved then, guest judge level is capitalized elsewhere in these rules. 
Then my question would be, how do we specify that this would only apply to regions one through nine? Or do we want it to apply to everyone? I, I would say apply to everyone. So I think I like the way we just wrote it. I think I'm gonna leave my amended motion the way it is on the screen currently. And I'll read it again, only a licensed CFA judge or a guest judge at the approved guest judge, tier one guest judge level. Is that is it tier one or is it just approved guest judge level? May really? judge a super specialty ring. Did okay, I believe so what Pam refers to as tier one is the approved guest judge okay. level. All right, so then we're we're fine. Only yep. a licensed CFA judge or a guest judge at the approved guest judge level may judge a super specialty ring. That is my amended motion. Okay. Okay, Melody? I just, I want to weigh in with a point of order here before you go too far. Yeah. Once you've, so you present this motion, you've stated the motion, we're in debate. Um, the mover aided by the members can choose to modify it before we vote. But if anybody is objecting, like really objecting and saying, I don't agree to this, then there has to be a motion to amend just the way we used to do it. Yep. So it's not a free for all anymore. And so it's, it's, you've got this freedom now with our new rules that allow people to kind of amend. But if, if there's a strong objection to the amendment, then someone, then it has to be a motion by Carol to move to amend her previous motion. Melody? I strongly object. Pam Mosier? I strongly object. All right, so then as a, as a point of order, then I'm just gonna point out as a point of order, then you have to, Carol, you have to make a motion now to amend, and then you vote on whether or not the motion can be amended the way you want to amend it. Okay, I will make a motion to amend my original motion. Okay, can I have a second? George will second. Okay, I got George saying he would second it. Um, Kathy Calhoun, you had your hand up. Were you going to say you strongly object? I was going to say I strongly object, and I really strongly object to this in the ID. Okay, thank you. Okay, any discussion on Carol wishing to amend her motion? Uh, I know there's objection, so I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor to allow Carol to amend the motion, raise your hand. I have Mark Hannon, George Eigenhauser, Carol Krasnowski, Pam Delabar, Mike Shelton, Kathy Dunham, Russell Webb, Paula Noble, Yokiko Hayata. Please lower your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. Melanie Morgan, Kathy Calhoun, Annette Wilson, John Kula, Pam Mosier, Sharon Roy, Rachel Anger. Lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. I see no abstentions. Rachel, go ahead and call the vote. I don't have a vote for Kenny. I was a yes. That's 10 yes, seven no, zero abstentions. Okay, motion passes to allow Carol to amend her motion. Kathy Calhoun, you had your hand up. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Okay, um, Carol and Ed, do we have the correct uh, wording for this show rule? Uh, yes, I believe we do. Do you agree, Ed? Yeah, I would just, the only thing I would suggest is capitalizing the L in level. Okay. Okay. Is there any additional discussion or questions on the amended motion that is on the screen? 
Okay, because I know there are objections. I will call for the vote. If you are in favor, raise your hand. George Eigenhauser, Pam Delabar, Mark Hannon, Kenny Curley, Kathy Dunham, Mike Shelton, Carol Krasnowski, Russell Webb, Yokiko Hayata, Paula Noble. Lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Russell Webb. No. I'm sorry. Melanie Morgan, Kathy Calhoun, Pam Mosier, John Kalua, Annette Wilson, Sharon Roy, Rachel Anger. Lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. No abstentions, Rachel. 10 yes, seven no, zero abstention. Okay, motion passes. Okay, uh, Kathy Calhoun. Yeah, I just have a question. Since this wasn't pre-noticed, does this have to, this amended motion was not pre-noticed that it has to have two thirds or not? No. No. The motion itself was pre-noticed. Um, and Shelly will correct me. Uh, you can amend uh, any motion that is pre-noticed. That is correct. Melanie? So I have an issue with um, going back to, oh, I don't remember which one it is, anything. When we just talked about this, Ed Raymond and Carol asked us to take all of our show rules through the show rule committee. If this is gonna be a situation where we bring up show rules and we no longer have the ability to um, control what happens with them, um, because they get kicked over to the show rule committee, then I'm uncomfortable with, that, with being forced to do that. I, I didn't follow that, Melanie. What do you mean? Um... Well, basically I brought forward a, a motion um, and then because I wasn't the one who made the motion on it, um, or I brought forward a problem to the show rules committee, I followed protocol. And because I wasn't the one to make the motion, it um, the ability to control what happened in that motion was taken away from me based off procedure. If that's the case, then I want to work around where I don't have to work through the show rules committee. Shelly? You're on mute. George has his hand up. Let him answer that, and I Go will ahead, George. answer that. It's not a matter of a workaround. If anybody objects to the amendment, we vote on it. Doesn't matter if it originally came from the show rules committee or if it originally came from the judging committee. Once it's on the floor, it becomes a board action item and we handle how it progresses. Because you objected to the amendment, we had to take a vote on it. If you'd have brought the motion and I'd have made a motion to amendment, we would have voted on it. It doesn't change the procedure. An amendment you know, that's objected to takes a board vote. So that's the workaround. If you don't like what the show rules committee came up with, you state it as an amendment to, to bring it back to what you originally want and the board will vote up or down on your amendment. Melly, do you, do you have any additional questions or comments? That makes sense. Thank you, George. Okay. Um, Ed or Kathy Cahoon. So can we ask that the that the central office give us some feedback, perhaps after several months of this to see if in fact there were uh, an extraordinary amount of errors or give us some feedback so they will know whether or not this is working. Okay, Aline. Yes, we'll do okay. that. Thank you. Okay, um, Ed. Uh, I don't think we've concluded yet, but I think we are pretty much done unless you have any other comments. No, that's it for show rules. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if we have any more coming in open session or if anybody has anything. So if you could hang around, just hang around just in case something comes up. I will do that. Okay. Uh, we are now going into, uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, we are now going into Awards, Kathy Dunham. Thank you. Um, I only have one action item. It is to establish a new award called the Diamond Star Award. The description of the award is in the body of the report, and I am happy to answer any questions. 
Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments before I ask for a second? Melanie? Um, so I really looked at this and I, and I appreciate the work, Kathy, that your committee puts into to all of this. Uh, and we do wanna recognize all of the hardworking individuals that uh, contribute to CFA in so many levels in so many places. Um, well, we have a star award. And I, I, the more I read it, and especially once I looked at what we were, where we were going with it, um, the more I felt like it, it devalued the actual Star Award itself. Um, so I, I have an issue with with adding this division here, especially when we're looking at giving it to people who've only had one one star before or something like that. Um, so uh, I'm just kind of expressing that concern. Um, so thank you. Okay, Kenny. I just wanted to say, Kathy, I thought it was an excellent idea to somebody who does some work above and beyond, regardless of the number of, of I like the criteria that you put forward. And as you said, it doesn't have to be awarded every year. It's just somebody who's had an, an exception. Thank you. Okay. Um, Melanie, you have a question? I think it's a good idea. One, you can only get a star award once for any particular activity. Um, and you've got to be doing it to get this diamond award for at least five years. We, you, you're not eligible to get a star award for each one of those five years because it's basically the same thing. So this at least you know, acknowledges the effort and, and time and commitment that people have to this specific area of expertise. And of course it comes to the board and we have the last word on um, you know, who gets it and who doesn't. Okay, Kathy Cahoon. You're on mute. Apologize. Um, this, uh, the guidelines uh, exempt board members from being eligible for this Diamond Star Award. But we have a lot of people that are doing a lot of hard work that I, I'm, I'm not sure that you should kind of be penalized if you're a board member. Okay. Can I answer that, Rich? Uh, go ahead, Kathy. The, the committee felt that because the board members already have our uh, own service award, for longevity on the board, that this was something that was relevant for a specific job over time. Um, you know, there's a multitude of things out there. Uh, doing analysis, doing, um, you know, work within breed rescue, doing work within, you know, a, a multitude of areas that really are um, over the course of time. And some of those jobs are pretty hard when it gets right down to it um, and heartbreaking in some cases. Um, so that's why we felt that the board should, board members should not be considered as active board members. Now, if you go off the board and you're still doing that job, I'm happy to entertain that nomination. Without question. Okay, Pam Dolliver. Just a bit of clarification. The the so-called award is actually just a recognition uh, of uh, service, not of a particular um, accomplishment, except for surviving being on the board for X number of years. Thank you, Pam. Um, does anybody want to make a second on this motion? I'll second. Is that Russell? Yes. Okay, thank you, Russell. Okay, um, George. I'd like to make a motion to amend. I'd like to strike out the line that says, is not currently a board member, and that's my motion. Okay. Kathy will second. All right, so I got George on the amended motion. And Kathy made the second. Okay, any discussion on the amendment? 
Okay, I'm going to call for the vote because uh, I don't think I'm going to get unanimous support on that. So all those in favor, raise your hand to amend striking um, is not currently on, is not a current, is, is not currently a board member. George Eigenhauser, Carol Kuznowski, Penny Curley, Kathy Calhoun, Mark Hannon, Melanie Morgan, Rachel Anger, Russell, um, you can't lower your hand. Makes me start all over. Yeah. George Eigenhauser, Carol Krasnowski, Kenny Curley, Kathy Calhoun, Mark Hannon, Rachel Anger, John Clilla, Sharon Roy, Yukiko Hayata, Pam Delabar, Mike Shelton, Paula Noble, Pam Moser, Russell Webb. Okay, lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Annette Wilson. Lower your hand. Uh, Kathy, are you opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Kathy. Okay. No. no, all right. I thought you were talking to me and I went clicking the button. <laughs> okay, Kathy Dunham, you're opposed? I am. Okay, lower your hand. And then any abstentions? Melanie Morgan. Okay, Rachel? Sorry, I had Melanie as a yes, so let me change this. 14 yes, two no, one abstention. Okay, motion passes to amend um, the original motion. So now we... Um, are there any further discussion or comments on the amended motion? Because we're gonna, I'm gonna call on voting on the whole whole thing now. Okay. Um, guideline number three is stricken. Uh, I, I'm just gonna try it. Are there any objections to uh, the new amended motion? Okay. I see objections, so I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Rachel Anger, Carol Krasnowski, George Eigenhauser, Kathy Calhoun, Kathy Dunham, Kenny Curley, Yukiko Hayata, Mike Shelton, Pam Delabar, Russell Webb, Paula Noble, John Kalilla, Sharon Roy, Mark Hannon, Annette Wilson. Uh, please lower your hand. If you are opposed, raise your hand. Melanie Morgan, Pam Mosier, lower your hand. And if you are an abstention, raise your hand. No abstentions. Rachel? That's 15 yes, two no, zero abstentions. Okay, motion passes. Um, Kathy Dunham, congratulations on your new amended motion. <laughs> um, Kathy, do you have any anything additional? No, not for open session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, next is uh, Mike Shelton, Special Investigation Committee. Yeah, um, we are presenting here a revision to the Code of Ethics that the board originally adopted back in October of 2022. Um, we think that document was a good start because it... Um, elucidated certain activities that would be considered as um, unsportsmanlike conduct, but we feel it doesn't go far enough to try and really address what our committee feels are some of the core causes of those unacceptable behaviors. And we are presenting this code of ethics as something to address what we feel will hopefully move CFA back toward what we really wanna do, which is emphasize, put the emphasis on the cats and the breeds and promoting the pedigree cat fancy and promoting our breeds instead of having shows be what I referred to before as a, the almighty quest for points. So we are here to do this to try and promote a change in mindset among, among exhibitors to try and get back to those goals that we think really more represent CFA's mission. So I'm not going to go through this whole thing and read the whole thing out loud because it's too long, but I'm hoping to get the board's support to approve this document. Okay, can I have a second? Carol seconds. Thank you, Carol. Okay, um, discussion and question for Mike? 
Pam Delabar? Um, my, in my opinion, we're going to need some translations of this uh, to be able to, to effectively get the word out um, throughout the global cat fancy. Um, I'm not, I'm not offering to do that. I, I, I did my French thing earlier this year. Um, the other thing that, that I did want to bring up and it's just evaded me right now. I'm, I'm, I'm still somewhere between, between uh, Japan, Korea and Finland. Um, yes, now I remember. The, the only way we are ever going to rid ourselves of much of the problem that we see among those who perpetuate um, bad conduct and um, uh, unsportsmanlike behavior is we really need to look at a different award system. And I, I know I've been saying that since about 2006. I still firmly believe it the more I see every, every year in show halls. But that's a comment. Mike, I support your efforts on this. Okay. Any additional comments or questions for Mike? Any objections to Mike's motion? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Mike, anything else? Um, I would just say that, Pam, I agree with you. This will need to be translated. I am not anywhere near enough of a polyglot to take that on. Um, but we can find the right people within CFA to work on translating this document and establish priorities on what languages will come first, either based on where it's most needed or where we have the best resources. Okay, Mike. And I'd like to thank the board for supporting this. We've put a lot of time and effort into this document. Okay, Mike, thank you. Great job on this for you and your committee. Um, Kathy Calhoun, I see no, no action items on international division. Do you have any additional points um, yes, the only other thing that I wanted to bring up is that um, the committee solicited proposals for the International Division Banquet for the 2022-2023 season. We had a number of really nice proposals, well-prepared and thorough. Um, the, uh, the event has been awarded to the Hong Kong Black Cat Club. And it will be Sunday, August 27, 2023. Okay, great. Melanie, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, Kathy, I know that at one point you had talked to me about the fact that um, there's a request to have some of the um, potential associate judges from Hong Kong judge in mainland China and vice versa. Is that still a request or is that something you wanna bring up later? It is, it is still a request. Um, I thought maybe we would bring it up in closed session. All right, fine. Sorry. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Does anybody else have any additional questions or comments for Kathy? Okay, hey, Kathy, thank you. Um, we're going to move on to Pam Mosier. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to bring the um, board's attention to um, the under processes to maintain and establish traditional and new show dates, number three and five B. I put parentheses, parentheses around the show rule, continue with the potentially, uh, potentially modify the 500 mile rule to 700 miles for show conflicts. I kind of like the board's input on, would they like to continue with the 500 mile or would they like to increase it to 700 miles? Does anybody have any comments? Yeah. Melanie? Um, I think given the environment that we have out there um, and the limited exhibitor base that looking at increasing it to 700 actually makes a lot of sense. John? I like to keep it as 500, if it keep it 700. One four, and, one, four, and seven gonna have a lot of problems trying to replace shows. 
Okay. Mike. Frank, yeah, frankly, I think John hit the nail on the head. As I, I don't have an objection to seven to seven hundred miles for the West Coast, but trying to put any single limit on it that's going to apply to CFA in regions one through seven or one through nine is, I think, next to impossible. Okay, Pam Delabar. I was just going to ask uh, that we we also convert this to. Uh, Kilometers. Okay. Easy enough. We can do that. George? Yeah, I think right now we should be encouraging shows, not discouraging them. And the greater exclusion zone we create, the more we discourage new shows. 500 miles is barely workable. I'd rather see it be less. Okay. Kenny? I, I agree with John. Um, 500 miles. You know, we can go a little bit over or a little bit under, but we just need to be, you know, respectful of each other's show dates. Okay. Um, Ed, are you, okay, you are still there. Um, Pam, yeah. and to the entire board, I don't believe the 500 mile rule is a show rule. It's just the rule that the board's been working from. Mm -hmm. is, is that a correct statement? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only rule that I believe exists, and maybe Kathy, John, and Matthew can correct me, is ID possibly in China. John? Yes, there is a, a distance rule in China. That's what I thought. 600 kilometers and four, or 500 miles, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. That's what I thought. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so that is not a specific rule. However, maybe 5B is a rule uh, because the show would be moving greater than 50 miles from its original location. Um, so Pam Mosier, how do you want to continue with number three? Number three, I'll, I'll stay with the 500 miles. It sounds like that's how the, the board would like it to stay and I'm okay with that. I just wanted your input. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, all right, now you want to tackle 5B? Yeah, the fi 50 to 75, is, is that going to be an issue with, with people? Okay, <laughs> Matthew? Uh, yes, sorry, I, I, I just want to say that there's the recent case that John and I work on in China. And so this is going to be one weekend this month, we have three shows happening. And uh, they are actually two of them are in the same uh, area. Uh, and the free shows are exactly, almost just exactly 650 kilometers apart. Uh, the third show is organized by, uh, by Agnes Sun and she really struggled to find a spot within the province, the city that she got the support with sponsor to put on the show. And fortunately, she could move between the province to uh, another big city and still secure the sponsor. So uh, I think I uh, just want to add that I think increasing the distance, uh, even for a large country like, like China, especially for large China, uh, would have potentially taken out one shows or two shows uh, out of the season. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Matthew. John? I support the 75 miles from traditional day location. That's what I'm saying. It helps sometimes when you lose a show hall, you have a shot of finding another show hall 75 miles without any permissions. Okay, Mark. Yeah, I want to point out that this is not a show rule. The show rule actually says that if you change cities, you have to get approval. But our rule of thumb has been 50 miles. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to, we're talking about changing a show rule here. We're changing our policy. Mm -hmm. So the 50 miles is not a show rule, Mark? No, the show rule says change of city. Is that mm -hmm. right, right, Ed? Correct. Okay. So the 50 miles is just the rule that the board's been using, just like the 500 mile rule. Right. Okay. Um, well, if the board agrees with that, then... Um, that's what we'll go by uh, unless we want to make it 
I shall rule. Pam Delabar. Just wanted to say the uh, um, 500 miles equals 804.672 kilometers and 75 miles equals 120.7 kilometers. Okay, thank you. Mark? Well, in, in light of the comments about China, I'm wondering whether we should uh, make exceptions for certain geographical areas that uh, we could say 75 miles for, to move locations here, but, but that might not be practical in, in other parts of the world. Matthew, do you want to comment? Uh, yes, I, I would agree. Um, for China or even for some of the ID, um, 75 miles is just basically from Hong Kong to new territories, and you know it's no, no difference at all. Yeah, it's just sorry. So, uh, Matthew, do you have a recommendation now to Pam Moser's committee on uh, what we might do different from the uh, 50 to 75 mile rule? I think as Mark pointed out, the spirit of this was when, when shows a move from one city to another, uh, but 50 miles uh, to quite a few places is still the same city, considering the now some of the big cities, how big they are. Okay. So I think maybe add the fact that, I mean, if it's across from one city to another, rather than being so specified about 50 miles. Okay. Pam Mosier? This is only for regions one through seven. This is not for anybody else. Where was that on the report? It is, this is only for the US. That's what I, I'd ask oh, okay. you. Okay, you're right. You're yes. good point. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. That's right. Um, the social scheduling is domestic. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kathy Calhoun? I, that, I, I thought it was domestic as well. <laughs> Pam Delabar? I like some of the, the uh, things that Pam's brought up, um, especially on this changing from moving from a, a city to putting a mileage or, or a kilometer value to it makes uh, a lot more sense because you've got so many places that, that you have a, one major city and a whole bunch of suburbs with, under different names. So it, it, it makes more sense to keep, keep it at miles or kilometers. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, who, who second this motion? Well, wait, Rich, there, I haven't made any motion. Okay, you haven't made the motion yet. Yeah, but I, can we take some kind of a straw vote on this 50 to 75 so I know which way to go? Sure. Okay. Uh, if you're in favor of moving from 50 to 75, raise your hand. Hey, Pam, I got 13 people on screen in favor. Okay, that's good. So that's, I will move that to 75 miles for um, traditional locations. Okay. Okay, and so this. my next question is, does anybody have any other questions on, on here? Okay, Melanie? Penny? Mark? <laughs> Yeah, this is not going in the show rules, right? This is just a, a working number for the board. Yes. Okay. okay. Is there any other questions or comments for Pam? Okay, Pam, do you want to make the motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion um, to accept the plan um, as amended for the 75 mile rule. Okay, and you're going to, um, it would be effective. Um, well, you want a motion to approve the entire plan, not just right. the 75, exactly. right? Yeah, the okay. entire plan with the, with the 
75 mile rule to the traditional locations. Melanie right. will second. Melanie? Yes, seconding. Thank you. All right. Kathy Cohn. I just have a question. Uh, is this going to go in, where would this document live so we can find it when we forget all this? Well, what I was going to request is I, um, once we get the plan approved, I was going to send this to all the regional directors to post on their websites so that clubs know what is expected. So that they know here's the, here, here is how we're doing this here. And then I would also include on here my, my name, phone number, email address, and Mary's name and phone, mail, phone number and email address so they can contact us when they want to make, um, you know, ask for a new show. Pam Delabar. Pam, you, you, uh, you know, stated this basically deals with regions uh, one through seven. Yes. Uh, would that, uh, take away the requirement for regions eight and nine to um, advertise uh, shows like that are a new show coming up or our show has to change, you know, a hundred miles where it's holding its show. We have been doing that for as long as I've been associated as a regional director and that's been since 2014. Um, with two years off, um, would that preclude, you know, take away that requirement for us to to have to announce those shows? Uh, uh, like I said, this is only for domestic. So you, I mean, because this still comes under the umbrella of show scheduling, and I realize the the uh, more intricate parts of what you're going to have to address, uh, but that that requirement. Um, would that be sort of mox nicks now for eight and nine, would you see? Or would you prefer under show scheduling that uh, we continue to, to have uh, CFA make those announcements of new shows and, and um, uh, show, change loca uh, show location changes? I would say you do it the way you've been doing it. Okay, so we'll do that. That's how you do it. Got so it. Pam, your rec Pam Moser, your recommendation is for eight and nine to continue doing what they've been doing. Right, because we don't have any say in that. Okay. John Colella. Yeah, I have a question, Pam. Mm -hmm. You meant about getting new show days going through you. You mean the regional direction not gonna be involved anymore? That's correct. Unless, unless John, there is an issue where um, we tell a show, uh, a club that no, and I don't know why we did, because in the plan here, we can, you know, we're stating that clubs can put on shows. And so if there is a problem, they don't um, like what we have said, we will call the regional director and talk to the regional director. And um, if we cannot be um, satisfi satisfactory to the clubs, they, uh, they can still come to the board for final approval. Okay, no, that's fine. I just need to know the rules. That's all. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, just so everybody's aware, that's pointed out in number nine on the document. Okay. Show schedulers have the final say of what dates are approved. And then number 10, regional directors and club have the right to take all disputes to the board for final ruling. Right. Kathy it's, Dunham? It's not, up, it's not down far I enough. I had the same the question screen. John did, Rich. Yeah, it's okay. there. Shelly? Is there a reason that you can't just list the regions that this applies to in the title so that there won't be confusion? I mean, your title says this is the process and can you not just say four regions, whatever you're having? One through apply? seven. One through seven? If it yeah. does, sure, we can put that in there, that's fine. Okay, good recommendation. Yes, that's great, yeah, yeah, that's fine, thank you. Penny? Yeah, uh, I do have a problem with uh, have, having somebody else have a final say with a show, particularly if they have to move fast. Um, so I don't think I can support that particular part of this, even though it's non-binding. Okay. 
Any additional questions or comments? Okay, um, I'm gonna call for the vote on this. If you're in favor of the amended plan and the only amendment to the plan is 75 miles and listing regions one through seven, raise your hand. Mark Hannon, George Eigenhauser, Melanie Morgan, Carol Kuznowski, Russell Webb, Kathy Calhoun, Yokiko Hayata, Rachel Anger, Annette Wilson, Sharon Roy, Paula Noble, Mike Shelton, John Kalila, Kenny Curley. Okay, lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Kathy Dunham. Okay, lower your hand. And if you're an abstention, raise your hand. I think, do I have to abstain? I think I do. Uh, Shelly, does Shelly, does uh, Pam Mosier have to abstain on this? I don't know what she has to personally gain. I don't think so. No, I don't see a personal conflict. I mean, your abstention is up to you, and it would be based on whether or not you feel there's a personal conflict. I oh, don't okay. see one. So Okay, then I would vote yes. Okay, okay thank you. Uh -huh. um, Pam Delabar, are you an abstention? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rachel? That's 15 yes, one no, one abstention. Okay, motion passes. Um, Pam Mosier, congratulations. Well, um, I, I, I like to thank the board for approving this. I, I think this will um, help uh, help with, you know, the, re the regional directors not having to, you know, deal with this that much anymore. Well, you got a lot to deal with. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Pam. We're going to move on to other committees. Rachel, I need your help here. Do we have anything from other committees? You're on mute. Yep, I'm trying to unmute. Uh, we have no other committees. Um, okay. our, and our next agenda item was new business that was moved to executive session. Yep. And old business we have uh, dealt with already. Um, which was the Calmany, but the new old business of Mid Ohio that got moved to closed session too, correct? The, that was new business and it got moved to executive session, correct? Oh, okay. That was new business. Oh, you're right. Catch show failure. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, does anybody else have anything before we adjourn for attending uh, in the audience? 